Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools? And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Hi, I'm Sam from Adventures in Crafting. I'm a craft and crochet teacher based in Tring in Hertfordshire. Since lockdown, I've moved all of my classes onto Zoom, so I now have customers from all over the country. I teach lots of crafts, but crochet is my specialism. I became passionate about crochet when I was pregnant with my fourth child and in desperate need of some me time. Crochet became my sanctuary and I've crocheted every day since then. I'm a qualified teacher and eight years ago I began teaching crochet. I love sharing my passion with other people. I design patterns, sell kits and teach lots of classes. My classes range from beginners to next steps, specific makes and clubs. I also like to design crochet alongs. My most recent one was my Autumn Granny Square crochet along, which resulted in me designing this allotment jumper, which I love to wear when I'm out gardening and looking after my chickens. <laughs> my crochet tip for you is to enjoy it. Crochet should be about taking part in a hobby that brings you pleasure. My claim to fame is that I met Kirsty Allsop at the Handmade Fair and I gave her one of my crochet sunflower brooches. I'm so excited to be taking part in Yarn Lane and I hope you'll enjoy my demonstrations. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools? And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. 
Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. And welcome to Yarn Lane. So excited for today because it's tank top day. No, they're not called tank tops. They're not called tank tops. They're sleeveless jumpers. And I look at mine. I've got the brown one. Loving this one. If you are joining us for the first time, if you've come from Sewing Street, you've joined us Yarn Lane. What's Yarn Lane? Well, it is the joy of knitting and crochet and other yarn crafts um, that we have that comes to us at the end of Sewing Street a few times a week, which is fab. If you're a Sewing Street customer, then that's fine. Yarn Lane carries on after Sewing Street. Your account is the same if you've already bought things on Sewing Street. Your P&P's covered because you only pay one pay, one P&P, that's hard to say. Um, well, you can call the call centre. There's a number at the bottom, 0800 4700 600. The only difference is to order, you need to go on to www.yarnlane.com, not sewingstreet.com. You won't find it on there. There is loads. Look at that. We've got new in, yarn, kits, needles and hooks, patterns and books, tool storage and accessories, things that are about to sell out. It's all on there. So we have the good and the greats and the wonderful, marvellous people that all are um, experts in knitting and crochet. Now look at that. If you haven't ordered from us before, free P&P off your first order. Don't forget that. You have to put in YL free PP. Not difficult to remember. Um, if you're, want, if you're watching on the website, you need to go on to watch live, that bit that's flashing because Kat's pressing on it. Um, scroll down from there. Now, every time we have Sam on air doing her kits, they start selling out. So if I was you, you need to order now. Oh, guess the most popular. I'll let Sam do that. What do you think is the most popular? Um, Monica, which is the blue the one. Blue one. <laughs> Name. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm guessing Phoebe, which is the one you're wearing. <laughs> right. Big reveal. You were yeah, right. I have done some a bit of research. Oh, okay. I've been promoting oh. them. <laughs> they are they are fantastic. So those are those are the four kits. They do all different colourways. They're all there and all the hooks and the other bits and pieces that you need to buy. So welcome, Sam. Welcome. Thank you. So lovely to work lovely with to you. Be back. We never yeah, clash on the same you. day. Yeah. Do we? That, nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> love, love my jumper. Oh. I'll be Christmas? wrestling that off of you before I go. No, yes, I'm thank this. you. So how? What was the inspiration behind this? I mean, I love a tank. This, no, you haven't called it a tank top. Have well, you? I've called it a sweater vest. I did originally think tank top mm. is the same thing, obviously, yeah. but. Um, yeah, once I started researching, I, I just was really keen to design one. And once I started researching different styles and things, they seem to be called sweater vests. I in think the shop tank at the tops moment. probably the old tank name. tops. What we knew them as yeah. before yeah. when we were children, I think. So, oh, like you said, knitted vest or crochet vest. But or, they are everywhere, yeah. aren't they? They're everywhere. Wearing yeah, them. Crochet is so on trend at the moment, mm. and all the shops are full of it. And yeah, so I keep seeing them. They keep popping up on different shops and. I thought I've got to design I know, it's one. Most places you yeah. go, like um, Toast have got it. Haven't yeah, they? yeah. Um, two hundred ninety-five pounds. What in wow. Toast? Ooh, two hundred ninety-five pounds for a tank top. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're everywhere. There you go. They are yeah. everywhere. So I know whenever I wear my crochet things, people say, "Ooh, that's lovely," don't yeah. they? More so than where I when I wear knitted things, which is yeah. odd. Well, they're, yeah, they're just everywhere. All the shops have got them at the moment. So then so. how did they go from being a sweater vest to being a friend's Well, once we, got, <laughs> once we got once we got went down the sweater vest route, <laughs> it just brought back all my friends' memories. I'm just mm. a huge fan of the TV show, and right. I still watch it now. And uh, yeah, and, and Chandler wears a sweater vest. Right, So and that's, that's where it came Once from. I was thinking along the sweater vest lines, I just thought it's got to be, to be friends, it? it's got to be Chandler. How did you choose the colourways though? Well, I mean, they're all named after the friends characters. Yeah, okay. So I've, I've sort of, all the female friends characters. Um, but they, well, I, was, I always go bright. I always love a rainbow one. So I this know, is I like the grey on that though. Yes, I like the grey yeah. setting off the rainbow mm. colours. 
And then I also like to, I think about people going to work. So there's the black one that would be really nice over a, um, a work so shirt. So the Phoebe is the one that so you're I'm wearing. wearing. Phoebe. So Phoebe she is... Says, does go for the wacky clothes, doesn't she? She's quite kind of... Uh, so she's actually she's sort of grey and bright. Yeah, grey and bright, very cheerful, fun. So it's Right, let me have a look at the Phoebe kit. <laughs> we'll do them one at a time. Otherwise, do you know what? We'll just confuse everybody. Right, oh, that was good. That was the first one. So in the Phoebe kit, first of all, you get it in a beautiful drawstring bag, which is lovely to use as a project bag while you're making it. And then you can use it um, for storing your yarn afterwards or all manner of other things. I've got a few of these now. Um, then you get two balls of clerical. Yes. <laughs> I've got to get the, number, the colours right. Then you get a ball, one ball of cranberry. Oh, this is all um, 100 grams acrylic. It's a really nice quality um, acrylic yarn as well. It's ever so soft. I can tell you from wearing it, it feels really soft. And I bet it's it really washes comfortable, well. comfortable, isn't it? Yeah, and washes well. That's it's the nice just, thing about acrylic. And it's not yeah. itchy. It's not yes. Itchy. It's very <laughs> soft. Um, then you get a ball of, luckily they've got the jade. Let's see what they call them. A ball of crocus and a ball of buttermilk. So there's your sort of three bright colours. And then this is the um, the grey that's used for the edges, the contrast trim around the edges and between the lines as well. Yes. And yeah. then obviously Sam's amazing full instructions. Now I have worked quite a few of her kits now. I can tell you they're always brilliant, always good. Oh, we've got a message from Penny. Oh, I'm so excited <laughs> to make Phoebe when she arrives. I didn't think I'd be able to get one as I was at work, but I'm off with COVID, so I've ordered. Oh, that's brilliant. Yes. Thanks. I know. I still Penny. can't <laughs> still can't decide which one I want to make the most. <laughs> so all the instructions are here, very, very comprehensive, and all the sizes. So they start at size six. Yes. Yeah. And it ends up at size 30. That's an amazing yeah. range. Yeah, so you've got enough in the kit to make the bigger size. Right. Uh, so obviously, if you're making one of the smaller ones, you might even have enough to yeah. make two. Yeah. Wow. Um, and yes, so just really trying to be size inclusive. Yeah. So starting with your extra small and, and working up to 5XL. And it explains all in it how to do your measuring. Yeah, so I've written, so I've put measurements, actual measurements. You've got a table there on the first page okay. for your sizing. Um, and I've put the actual measurements in there. So I've done it with zero ease, so it's quite fitted. So if you want yours to be looser, you might want to size up. Okay. So I've done it so that you can wear it over a dress or a blouse because it's the sort of thing that needs to be quite fitted. So just bear that in mind when you're looking at the measurements. Right. Because um, mine's mine's quite fitted yes. and yours is a bit looser. Yes, exactly. So it? yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I so think you can this see is the way it looks on the, yeah, in the way we're just wearing them. Depends how you feel, really. Exactly. And as with all my patterns, I've written it so it's really adjustable. So again, I've done mine quite cropped because I wanted it over a long shirt or a dress. Yeah, but if you wanted it a but bit if longer. if you wanted it longer, you've got plenty of yarn. Yeah, no, and I'll nice, show you it? later on how you can, I'll just step back so you can see it. Oh yeah, no, you can see it. It looks lovely over that. Yeah, I really but like nice it. nice with jeans. Yes, nice with jeans. Anything really. I, I'm a complete convert now to a sweater vest. Oh, I love it. I was saying to Rebecca, I've actually never worn one before <laughs> and now I am just loving them. I've got quite a few of them yeah. actually. Not ones that I've made, ones I've bought they're as well. So because they're just practical warm aren't and lovely, they? Just aren't the amount of right amount of coziness. Yes. Yeah. And just Well also I find I sometimes like I'm wearing a jumper and I have to take it off so I can put my coat on. Yeah. Exactly. And then I'm cold, yeah. which is ridiculous because yeah. often they're just too big, aren't That's they? Too bulky. And sometimes doing jobs around the house or crocheting, and if I'm yes. wearing a jumper, yeah. it can feel really bulky around the sleeves. So and then you're cold. And then you're cold, yeah, when you take it so off. This so this is a this sewing is... knitting item. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Support your uh, crafting <laughs> hobby by wearing <laughs> your sweater vest. <Exactly. best. laughs> so that's yeah. um, Phoebe. So we'll, we'll talk about the pattern and how it all yeah. works in a bit. But I just wanted to go through all the colourways so that you can choose because I know it's difficult. I'm so excited I've just ordered Rachel Jules at the Granny Square. Oh, oh fantastic. how lovely. Fantastic. Thank you, Jules. So the next one is Janice. Oh, it says it on the front. I, well, I got it right. Yeah. So Janice. Janice is your very serious yes. monochrome yes, version. Yes, She's the, it mine's, yeah, it's the monochrome. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Are you a Friends fan? Yeah, no, I am. I am. Yes. <laughs> So this so, is a bit more serious, it's your monochrome. So in this yeah. one, your main colour is the black, so you've got two balls of that, and then you've got clerical, no, that one's not clerical, that one is dark grey, clerical, and um, white, oh, I've lost my label. So you've got a silver there, and the white, yeah. And then white. Yeah. 
So that's your sort of very monochrome look. Yeah. Can you, can so you that's see that one? This one here. Sam's got that one. one. <laughs> that's a little one, isn't it? Yeah, so I made that in the smallest size for my daughter to wear. Oh, there we go. Anna. So that shows what a little one so is like. If you go onto Sam's Instagram eight. page, yeah. if you want to see them all in on herself and her children, they're all on there. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. But that's nice for work, isn't it? I thought it would be really nice for work over a white nice shirt. Nice white blouse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah black and trousers. Or, or a black polo neck my daughter wore it over. Oh, it looked yes. really lovely on her. You know, even like a black yeah. pencil skirt with that yeah, would look exactly. lovely. Or black jeans. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Right, so that's Janice. Right, then let's move on to, oh, the one that I'm wearing, Rachel. I'd like to be Rachel. In my <laughs> dreams. Yes. I'm Rachel. Everyone wants to be Rachel, yeah. didn't they, when we yeah, used to watch it? Yeah, I am it. Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. In my head. Yeah. I think I'm 23 in my head as well. So really. stylish, isn't she? Yeah, that's me. She's really, <laughs> really stylish. So you've got, but I like brown. I love brown. I wear a lot of black, brown and pink. Me actually. too. Yeah. And I think it's a really versatile mm. colourway, that one. Could go over goes, oh, a dress or anything. Really. I thought that today, having seen them in the flesh, I'd be able to decide, but I'm actually, <laughs> actually worse. So you get ferret. Ferret of all the two names. Balls of it's ferret. crazy. So two ferrets. <laughs> yeah, two ferrets. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, isn't it? A ferret, a vintage rose, baby lilac, oyster. I can see all these colours now. And blossom. So that's really your beautiful. Really it is. Pretty. It's quite a blossomy jumper, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's really it's pretty, isn't it? Pretty. I love Look, it. See in detail. Yeah. Look at that. So this is the um, Rachel. Rachel Fudge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was originally going to use a fudge instead of the ferret. Oh, okay. They're very, very similar. The colours, return so. of the tank top. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Jan. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Did you watch Call the Midwife last night? They no. the best tank top I've ever seen. Oh, really? They always wear a tank top. Then. But yeah. it had this massive V. I've never oh. seen one that, like this sort of came down to here. Oh, brilliant. Sam, can you make it a roundish neck? Well, thank you for asking. Is that Jan? Because on the back, you can see there is a round neck. And because I'll show you later, it hasn't really got a seam. So right. you could wear it the other way round if you wanted to. Oh, what a good so idea. So uh, maybe if I turn this one round. Yeah. Can I just turn I around the... I would take mine off, but um, it messes up all my right So it's just been pulled everything. down. But there's a round neck at the back of so it. So you can wear it either way then. So it's way, reversible then. in a way, or whatever you call it, when you can <laughs> wear it the yeah. other way round. Well, I've got a cardigan that you can either wear as a cardigan or as a jumper when oh, you work yes. back to front. Yeah, exactly. Could so you put two the back on the front? Could you? You could follow the instructions. Yeah, you could follow the instructions for both. So I've, I've broken it down so you've got the front and the back. Mm. So I'll, I'll, I'll show everybody. But you, you work it in the round up to the armpits. Right. And then you work the back and then you work the front. So you would just have to follow the instructions okay. twice so instead of do doing it. them differently. But yeah, so simple enough, yeah. A uh, question from Janet. What is the bus size on the largest sizes? 146 to 158. What's that in... Um, centimetres. So yeah. I've done, I think that's a roughly a 28 to 30. Um, okay. But I haven't put what it is in inches, annoyingly. But if if you... Um, What's so that when I say 28 to 30, I mean female size, women's we'll sizes. Kat. She's got a calculator. Kat, what's, what's 158 centimetres in inches? Six foot three. <laughs> 52, 62. Yeah. Wow. So um, just bear in mind that if you are more towards the larger end of that, if you are looking at the 158, it'll be a little bit fitted. Yes, but, okay. Yeah, so but that's that's a big size range, isn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. So, you know, when you yeah. think you start off at a size six, yes. so that's a good yeah. size range. Yeah. Fantastic. Right, let's do the last one, number one popular one so far, Monica. <laughs> so in Monica, we're going blue. So why did you choose blue for Monica? So this then? is this is oh I don't know why I chose it for Monica. I think because she's um, she's always really stylish, but she's more of a jeans type person okay. in the show. So I wanted something you could wear that'd be a bit more casual and not quite so um, flamboyant as my one. So <laughs> <laughs> so, this so we've is, got two navies. So that I think I would think you could wear that with anything. That blue yeah, you colour way. I yeah. love this colour. Yeah. Um, what's that called? Tempest. Tempest yeah. It's like that. Deep petrol. Yeah, petrol, it's got a real it? petrol look to it. Love that it? one. Yeah. Tempest. Then we've got Admiral. And then we've got, I love the colour names, Menthol. Like that. We've used that one before, haven't we? It's yeah. nice, isn't it? And Parsley. 
So there we go. Greens and blues. Yeah. And then the um the sweater vest, I keep calling it a tank top, is behind <laughs> um Sam, so you can see that there. I like that shade of green in it. It's lovely. It isn't works it? really, really well. Pops it looks out. very soft yeah. in it, doesn't it? Yeah. That's lovely. And again, hopefully, you know, something you can wear with anything. Message. Really. Love Sam's work, working Aww. on my hoodie. Got a dream catch to do and a poncho. I'm a <laughs> sewing normally, but you do such good instructions. Oh, that's Absolutely great. To hear. Well, Thank I'm you very so pleased. Much. I finished so my lovely. hoodie. And I finished my granny's Oh, wow. Well. You need a new project <laughs> now, yes. then. And I've just finished knitting <laughs> the dog jumper. timing. So. Oh, thank you so much, Sandy. <laughs> oh. So. If you are still a bit unsure which to get, because it is difficult, we've got a picture of all of them together, because sometimes that helps with all the codes as well. So take a picture. <laughs> there you go. Phoebe, Rachel, Monica and Janice. And there's <laughs> Sam and her daughter, <laughs> yeah. who's in Janice. High-fiving. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're still unsure which one to get, take a picture. What's in? Phoebe's in the lead. Oh. Ooh, overtaken <laughs> Monica. Oh, I know, I'm struggling. But I think Rachel's lovely, the one that I'm wearing. Actually. I like that I think one. It's really yeah. nice. Yeah. It's very pretty, that mm. over a dress. Very pretty. Yeah. I still don't know which one. I think I might have to have more than one. <laughs> um, right, so those are all the kits. Those are all the kits. So let's just do hooks. Do we need a three and a half mil? Yes, so I've put four. three and a half and four. So three and a half because you make the chain with a slightly smaller hook when you get started. That I'll show you that in a minute. Mm -hmm. And then four for the whole jumper. Okay. Basically, whatever you normally work with when you're using when you're working with double knit yarn. So if you're someone that finds right. you have to go up a hook size normally with double knit yarn, then do that. So, okay. But generally, it's a four millimeter hook for most people with double knit. Okay. Right. So the hooks are four ninety nine. These are my favourite hooks, actually. The clover. I use lots of different hooks, but I love clover hook. I don't know why. I think you just get used to different ones. I think I like them because they're quite chunky but flat. They're really comfortable to work mm. with, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, I like them as well. I know. I have them in many <laughs> sizes. I've got a one mil one now. Oh really? <laughs> it comes with a little tube that goes over the end of it because oh, it's lovely. so fine. Yeah, it has a little tube like a which needle, I had isn't it? Yeah. Uh, P.S. Just also ordered Phoebe. Oh, lovely, brilliant, <laughs> fantastic. Um, you will great. need needles to sew them up with. You will need scissors to cut your yarn, and you will need stitch markers. These are lovely. These. Mm because you've got different colours. What I like about these, you've got different colours and sizes, so it makes it much better for when you're marking different sections. Yeah, huge fan of a so, stitch marker. Ooh, move it to the left, I'm, I'm covered up, there we go. <laughs> so, ooh, and now I've dropped a ball of yarn as well. Right, that's everything. So all you've got to do, do is decide which character you want to be, or if you can't decide, just get two. But remember, Sam's kits sell very fast, so please do get ahead, get them in your basket and check out. Um, okay, so Sam, where do we start after you've measured yourself? Uh, yes, yeah, so after you've measured yourself, and I do suggest measuring yourself um, or the person who you're making it for yeah. or get them to measure one of their favourite fitted tops. The way, you know, if you've got one mm. that you really like and find comfortable, measure that one. Um, and I've suggested, obviously, bust size, but also um, length from um, under your arm to your hem, where you want it to sit, and also armhole depth. Right. So you can use all of those measurements to really make it fit you well. So okay. you don't have to. You can just use the size guide you've got there. But if you want to, you can really um, adjust it as you go along to fit you. So much like you would if you're making nice with clothing with, with, with sewing, with yes. fabric, it's good to try it on and, and see how it fits as you go. So sizing decided, it will then tell you where to start with how many chains you need. And I have suggested working with a smaller hook for your foundation you need to go chain. Left a bit. Oh no, that's fine if you're in the middle. Is that okay? Yeah. So it's because um, it comes in a bit mm. at the waist here, it's worth um, starting out the foundation chain with a half a size smaller, so hence the three and a half mil hook. Right. And the whole jumper is worked bottom up in the round. Nice. So it's a really straightforward thing to make. So if you haven't made an item of crochet clothing before, this is a really good starting point. I guess also it means when you get up to about this level, you could try it on, Yeah, you? exactly. You can put it on. And, and if it's not right. Yeah. You can just, I know it's just yeah. devastating, but it's better yeah. than getting up to the top, Yeah, exactly. It? And also Let's then you can think, nice. how long do I want it to be? Where mm. do, I, do I want it to be really cropped or do I want to go a little bit longer? Yeah. So you're starting here, right at the bottom and building it upwards, working in the round. And because you're working in the round, 
There's a little seam, but not a very obvious one. So hence you can wear it back to front, as I was saying, if you want the round neck. Right, okay. So uh, there will be a slight seam, but it's not like with some crochet clothing where you do get a really yeah. obvious yeah, seam down there. So you're going to start by doing a chain and the chart in the sizing chart in the pattern will show you how big that chain is going to be. I'm going to do a miniature chain. So I've done some little samples I'll show you in a minute, but as <laughs> in real miniature, <laughs> as if they would fit little, yeah, exactly, or a teddy bear or something. That's so I can demonstrate it to you. So, so <laughs> you'll start with the number of chains it shows you in the pattern. So you start with your slip knot. So you're, I will, should I go right back to the beginning? I haven't done that for a while. Yeah, let's, let's go right do back it. to the beginning. I know, well, we have new people on Yarn Lane all the time. Exactly. So and and it's really always really lovely to hear that someone's picked up crochet again yeah. because they've seen Which it. Which is fab, isn't it? Exactly. So this is how I make a slip knot. So turn in the palm of your hand, loop the yarn over the top. And I like to use my hooks. It gets you in the habit of using it. Through the front, grab this piece of yarn here. Whoops, and pull it back through. But you can use your fingers for that as well. And then just tighten it. And you get this loop on your hook and when you pull the other end it tightens it up a bit but the trick with crochet is not to be too tight so you want your loop to move up and down your hook right okay and then you're going to put your hook underneath this yarn half a twist and pull it through that loop and that's how you make your chain so i'm using my three and a half mil hook here so you'll be able to see how that keeps the bottom of your top a little bit tight if you want the bottom of your top to be a bit looser, just use your four mil hook. So you make your chains, and then when you've made the length you need, you can see, you can count, you've got this little chain here. We talk about Vs a lot in crochet. They look like Vs when they're held upright like that. Um, and you can just count them. So another way of thinking about them is like chain link, because they sort of two little strands that dip down into the one before. Mm -hmm. And you can just count your Vs to see how many chains you've got. So if you have got your stitch markers, you can use them at this point because some of them are quite long chains to start with. So when you're counting, it is important to get the number correct. Yes. So it, sometimes you can get your little stitch markers and count say 10, 20, 25 chains, put a stitch marker in and you know then that you've got definitely got 25 up to there. Yeah. The number of times I've counted and lost count halfway through. I know, I know. <laughs> I think well, that, oh, that's that again. It's brilliant with stitch markers for that, <laughs> isn't so it? so useful. I use them for such a lot of things and yeah, they're really useful for that. So imagine this is my really long chain. You're then going to join it to make a loop. So it's really important that your chain's not twisted. So easy enough with this length, but again, if you've got a longer chain, yeah, it you've can got get a bit twisted. For that. So this is what I do. So I'll hold the hook I've and, mine too. Yeah, and um, she'll, now she'll probably be crossing me for saying this, but Terry Ann, who made the uh, Monica one, she did twist it and had to undo it and start again. Oh, really? Sorry, Terry Ann. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I know, it but all um, the time. It, it, it does, does, and it's, yeah. it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. There's no getting round it when you've twisted it. No, you just you have to undo it and start again. So all I tend to do, I really recommend. I know we often um, crochet on our laps. Mm. But just if you can find yourself a tabletop, lay it out flat and you want to see all the V's facing up towards you, that's the right side. And I tend to just get my thumb and finger, I don't know why I've got pen all over my thumb, but there we are, <laughs> I didn't have a minute ago. And then you're just going to start here and I just gently run my finger and thumb down the chain without letting go. So you're making sure all your chains are facing the same direction. Right. When you get to the bottom where your knot is, keep hold of it. So because you haven't let go, it hasn't had an opportunity to twist. Okay. And then you just put your hook through that first loop there. Brilliant. And you're going to make a slip stitch to join it. So all you do for your slip stitch is you grab that yarn with your hook and you're going to come through both those loops on your hook. I think maybe it's because I'm sitting down and I think it's straight. I but think, like, yeah, I think often, obviously it's a great hobby to do in front of the television yes. and on our laps mm. and, or chatting with friends, but just occasionally it's useful to be able to lay it flat and look at it. So I'm not saying you have to crochet at the table, and I certainly don't, no, but, but just, just for that occasionally it's worth clearing the coffee table <laughs> or whatever and just laying it out. So To get that straight. Exactly. Okay. So I'm just going to switch because I made a chain earlier. So that once you've got your chain, Here's a slightly longer chain, it's still teddy bear size, but <laughs> gives you the idea. And you're now just going to do a simple 
round of trebles. So you do your chain three in the air, and that's your first pretend treble, and that is acting as the treble in the bit where we slip stitched. So then you find the next chain along, and you're going to make a treble in there. Now you make sure as you look at it, you're looking at the front of it, so you've got those Vs facing up towards you, and you can either work under one loop or you can go under two. So I normally suggest just going under one, but it will make it a little bit neater and tighter if you actually put your hook under two strands of the chain on this right. occasion. Okay. But having said that, make sure you do that consistently if you do, because if you do some under the top and some under the bottom, you lose track. So just make a decision. Am I just going under one loop or am I going to put my hook under two? Um, and that, you know, just proceed <laughs> to do the same thing into every chain. Okay. So through there, pull the yarn back through, gives me my three loops on my hook, yarn over through two of them, yarn over through two. And I've just realised I haven't switched hooks, so I'll do that now. So I've switched. Oh, so it's just so the starting this is the chain. point where you switch to your four millimetre. In right. fact, back here is the point where you switch okay. to your four millimetre. So you make your chain with your three and a half or half a size smaller than you normally work with double knit, and then you switch to your four millimetre, oh, okay. or whatever you normally have. So it literally is just for that chain. It just makes it sit a little bit uh, neater when you make it. Right, so then with your four millimetre hook, one treble in every chain around. So and this is what gives it that rib effect. Yes, yeah, so this it's is the beginning clever, though, of the it? ribbing. Yeah, so this is the very bottom of the jumper. So I will go all around, I'll just do a few more to show you. So we've got the main graphic is of the Phoebe, which is the brown and pink one that I'm wearing. Is it in the lead? Oh no, it's not the brown and pink one. The Phoebe is the one that Sam is wearing. I'm, we I'm Rachel. In the lead, by only by one. Second ah. is Rachel. <laughs> hey! There we go. Only by one. So Sam's only beating me by one. <laughs> I love this one. It's just so pretty, isn't it? It's love really this lovely. one. Mm. Only in the lead by one. <laughs> so we've beaten Monica. Oh, mm. yeah. That's surprising. Who was winning at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> She's still got the opportunity to make a comeback. Yeah. And then there's Janice on the right, the black one. And then Monica, <laughs> you'll have to, is on the website. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're working all the way around that chain, making one treble in each. And so it's just repeating that treble into every chain around. And it's worth counting at the end of that round to make sure you've got the right number of stitches. You've got your stitch count on okay. the pattern. Because I think once you've set it up and you've got the right number there, moving forward, it's easier to keep the right number. Right, okay. So, but this but bit just where, make sure yeah. on that first round that you I know, the I right often number. find I've got one too many or one less. I just sort of and fudge it. Yeah, exactly. You can do that. <laughs> I just <laughs> add one in. I exactly. know you're not supposed to admit to that, but I do. I just yeah. No one will ever know. Just add one in. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. add one in or take one out. Or, one. Yeah. <laughs> so I c I've got one here for my, my little miniature one. Mm. to show you what it looks like so you come all the way around I'll just take out my slip stitch and then you're going to fasten it join it with a slip stitch so you've got that first little three chain that you made here one two three and you're going to push your hook through the top one through the third one that you made now again the stitch markers are brilliant for this so if you struggle to find this because some people it is a bit you know looking at thinking well where exactly am I putting my hook as you make your chain three at the beginning, put a stitch marker in the third That's a really one, good tip. and yes. it helps you to find. Yeah. You then all you have to do is put your hook through where the stitch marker is. That's a really good tip because so it is, yeah, sometimes not that obvious, is no, it? No, exactly. Especially if you're fairly new to crochet. Yeah. So your hook goes through there, grabs the yarn, comes back through there, and the loop on your hook. So then you're going to you're continually continuing working around and around. So we're not turning or anything. So now you chain three in the air, and this is the point when you do the third one, you could put your stitch marker through there. Right, oh, so just so in that Just in that bit that yarn is coming out oh, of okay. here. Oh, right, okay. In fact, so I would put, <laughs> throwing my hook around, I would put my stitch marker here. Right, and then it's through there, ready. And then it's ready when you come back to the end of the round and it gets yeah. to the bit with the slip Perfect. stitch, you know where it goes. And so we're now going to create the ribbing that you can see at the bottom of all of the sweater vests. And to do that, instead of going into the stitch, you're going to go around the post. So with your trebles, you've got your 
the structure of the stitches, you've got this post and then you've got the V on top. So most of the time we work into the top of the V, but actually for this one, you're going around the post. Okay. And that's, I have to go that like that. That's what makes the <laughs> ribbing. <laughs> so find that post. So don't be afraid to kind of pull at your work. And you can see that post there. And you're going to make a treble around there. So this is called a front post treble. Right. Yarn goes over your hook. And then if you're right-handed from right to left, if you're left-handed the other direction, you put your hook under that post. So I'm not going into it. It's literally going under the gap underneath it. Yeah. And then you grab the yarn with your hook and you put it back, back under, mm -hmm. back to the other side, mm -hmm. back through. And that gives you your three loops on your hook. And then you just complete your treble as normal. So yarn over through two, yarn over through two. So that gives you what they call a front post treble. So your treble is pulled out to the front of the work. Mm. Now for the next stitch, you're going to do a back post treble. So for a back post treble, it's yarn over again, but you're coming, so you find the next stitch along and you're going to come from behind the work. So you've got the post of it here. So again, from right to left if you're right-handed, left to right if you're left, come from behind, push the hook through to the front, and then on the other side, back through to the back again. Okay. So your hook is now at the back of the work. And then grab the yarn with your hook and pull it through underneath that post. So I've put my finger and thumb here to show myself it's coming under there. And again, your hook is at the back of the work. It's behind the work. That gives me my three loops on my hook. So I grab the yarn and come through two and grab the yarn and come through two. And then you're just going to repeat that. So you can see this one sits behind the work. You've mm. got the V at the front there. So we've got a front post and a back post. So why do you alternate front and back then? So that gives you the ribbing look. Oh. So I'll show you a bit more of it, but that gives you this this quite sort of tight ribbed look. But it doesn't look like it's alternating. No, so you Does because it? what happens is you only really notice the front one. So this is the front one oh, and the back one's here. That makes right. the dip. So the front oh. one makes the raised bit and the back one makes the dipped bit. Right. So that is why you alternate it. Because when you said that those two, they look different. Yes. But of course they do because that's the rib. Exactly. Oh. And as you build it up, so you've got the front one that's that really makes it clever, raise up and the back that. one. Yeah, it's great. It's a really fun stitch mm. to do as well. So then you repeat that. So I'm going to do a front post and then a back post. And then you, what happens is you set yourself a little pattern so you can see as you go around where you are with it. So if you think you might have made two front posts in a row, as you get going, you can see. Yeah, so it's so not like counting what, anymore. You can no, just that's see. it. So once you've counted that first round, it mm. sets the pattern for you. Yeah. So you keep going around front post. And so if you did it all post. front post, would it just look really weird? It would just look a different texture, I think. Okay. <laughs> I've done it in blankets before. I'll have to give it but a go. But it's nice to have that ribbed look, though. Yes. I think it works well. And also, because it's quite tight, it pulls the bottom of the jumper in. Yeah. So it gives, you know, it gives like, like the edging that you would want on a mm. piece of sort of knit or crochet wear. So it gives it a really nice shape. So I just do a bit They're more. They're so stylish, aren't they? Can you imagine if you bought one of these ready-made, what it would cost? I know. That's the thing, isn't it? Absolutely you can nice. make something that looks like things in the shop oh, I know, the moment. it's fantastic, Brilliant. isn't it? Really good. So you can see that pattern there that I've made going around. Mm. And so what you do is you go all the way around like that and come back to the beginning and slip stitch it, which I haven't got time to demonstrate, but imagine yeah. you have yes. yeah that makes sense and then when you <laughs> get to the end of that row that round you then start again so you'll slip stitch it in that third of that three chain you'll chain three in the air and what you must remember is you always put a front post around a front post and a back post okay. around a back post so it actually just gets easier it just gets easier <laughs> definitely this, definitely easier. in fact i can show you on this one if i just snip him off where's my scissors gone okay so this is this one I actually finished, but I'll just join. A, imagine I'm doing another row. So you can see the seam is here. It's mm. a fairly invisible seam. And I just want to show you, it does get easier because you've got that kind of pattern then. So I've got to the end of a round. I'm starting another round. The front bit, yeah. the front post yeah. is raised already. So yarn over around that front post. And then the back post is set back. 
whoops, so you're going, once you've done that first round, it's just really self-explanatory as you go along as to what you have to do. You can watch Call the Midwife with Exactly. Ease. It fills up really quickly. <laughs> and I, you can see I've made quite a thick band for the bottom of it. Let's turn it over so you don't see the seam bit. Um, but you can do it as narrow or as oh, deep as you okay. want. So you can make it a bit deeper if you want to. So you, have, you have got plenty of yarn in the kit. If you make one of the larger sizes, mm. you might want to just stick to the pattern right. just in case, okay. but you should be fine. But if you want to go narrower, because as you can see on mine, where it was going to be cropped, I really wanted quite a deep base to it. Yeah, no, I think so that's nice actually. You, but you can play about with that. If you'd rather have a narrower mm. base, then you can just do you know, a few rows of okay. it. Okay. So feel free to play about with that a bit. Right, okay. That's, so that's all making sense. Yeah, that's your, um, that's your ribbing that's done. Rib. Yeah, that's nice the ribbing. It's nice and as well, isn't it? It's really lovely. Decided. And you can see with this one, I forgot to do it in a smaller hook size. So you can see how it comes out a bit if you do it in the same oh, hook size because it's such, it's quite a tight stitch, so it tends right. to pull in. So that's why I started with a smaller hook size in the pattern. But um, yeah, it's going to grow out again yeah, now as okay, we add more to it. So it's so worth doing. Yeah, it's worth that going hook down size. half the hook size for that. Okay. So shall I move on to yes, the next Yes, now we part? can add colour. Now we can start adding colour. So you've done that, so it's getting quite exciting. So, oh yes, let's, so I'll, well, so I'll talk you through, again, this is another part of the pattern where once you set the pattern with the first round of the colours, then it's there okay. for you. Yeah, now you've put a list here, haven't you? I have. Of what the colour is. Yes, so I've suggested colour ways. Now, you've obviously got your main colour that you've got two balls of. So you can't, yes, you can't change that. With the others... I've got two balls of ferret. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the others, you can be as flexible as you like with the colour ways. So there's two suggestions I've made. So one is that you do two colours and then you do... Um, a row of the, a round of the main colour. So for example, here I've done the red and the yellow and then I've brought the grey in again. And that's right. what I've done on the one I'm wearing. So okay. then I've done green and purple and then and brought then the, the grey in again. Okay. And that's the same on your one. Or you can do the four of the colours and then your main colour, which I think is what Terry ann has done on the Monica. Oh, okay. So you've yes. got all four colours and then the main colour. And your, Claire made your one. She's done it with the Yes, she's third. done it the same way as you. Oh. Also, there's nothing to stop you doing a couple of rounds of one colour. Oh, so, you know, you so could... More, more definite exactly. stripes. Exactly. Oh, dear. Yeah, or even blocks of colour. Yeah. So, you know, you oh, can really true. have yeah, fun with it. Yeah, you could do, it. like, sort of that much in each colour. You color, could, you and then put a bit stripes. of the main colour, and then, yeah. So you've got the colours there, but once mm. you've got the pattern, you know, once you've To be honest, I think pattern, you need to make your kit. Yes. And then, and then you go, right, I'm going to make it. another one. Yeah, and that one's going to be <laughs> Because then you could measure ways. it all. Yeah. And you'd be able to sort of see how exactly. to do it. So that, I think yeah. that's what I would do. Yeah, yeah. And so if you don't want to undo loads of it. But how would you choose? I mean, it does work well having, you know, I think the, the other one, every other is well, two and then it the brown. It just makes the main colour a bit more dominant, I think. Yeah, it sets think off it, the other yeah, colours. It does, yeah, it Well, so it sort of then, it hangs in with the... The edge and the bottom. Exactly, it all it? ties in nicely. I mean. Yeah, but mm. as I say, you can be flexible with that. Okay. <laughs> right, so back to starting off. So we're doing granny nice, stripes. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. <laughs> You're going to be a crochet <laughs> going model. To struggle. Claire might not be seeing that again. <laughs> no, she might not be because I love this one. <laughs> so um, to put the granny stripe in it now, what you do is you join your yarn where you fastened off. So if you've done granny squares before, yes, this is going to all make sense. Yes, so right. exactly. <laughs> Basically, granny anything. Mm. I mean, obviously, you get your variations on a granny square. Yeah. But yeah. a granny stripe or a, a granny pattern works in a different mm. way. It tends to refer to three trebles in a little cluster. <laughs> I wonder so. why. Yeah. <laughs> so you are going to join your new colour and chain three, and again, that chain of three is your pretend treble, mm. and then you make two trebles in the same place. Whoops. And you start anywhere? I tended to say, you can, absolutely can start anywhere, but I've always, tr I've tried to keep my seam in roughly the same place. Okay. Um, just because I was thinking I'll have a, a clear front and back. Mm. If you want yours to be double-sided, then put your, every time you join, do it somewhere different, and then there will be pretty much an invisible right. seam. Right, okay. So, I've chained three and now I'm going to put two trebles in that same place. 
And then all you do to start this granny stripe pattern is you skip two. So remember, you've got your front post and your back post to skip. So skip a front post, skip a back post, and the next cluster of three trebles goes, we're working into the stitch now, and it's into the V at the top of this front post here. So now you're doing yarn over and you put your hook underneath both strands of that V. Mm -hmm. Pull the yarn back through, gives you three loops on your hook, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. And you do three in the same place. Whoops. And then just going to repeat that all the way around. So you skip two, so skip a back post, skip a front post. In the next stitch along, which is now above a back post, put three trebles. So again, you're going into the stitch now. Like so. Okay. And then again. So I guess if you're alter alternating front post and back post, you know you're doing it right. Exactly. I was thinking that when I was making mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it must be about right, because now I'm going to a front post yeah. and then I'm well, going nice to a back to post. Like check, isn't it? It yeah. is. And it's nice to have checks that don't involve counting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And then again, so I just do a couple more and then I can show you how that looks. So all of this is in the instructions, the front post track, all of these terms yeah. that Sam is showing, they're all in the instructions. It explains to you what a back post treble is and what are you, and treble three together, it is all in there. So you haven't got to remember any of this. Yes. Oh, you've got your stitch guide with all of that in there. I didn't talk about... Oh, Rachel has gone into the lead. Has she? Mm. Oh. Rachel has gone into the <laughs> You've been modelling it well. Yeah. <laughs> it's my passion for it. Isn't it? Yeah. You don't buy them all. It's lovely though, isn't it? Look at that. It's really lovely. It's, I think it's, a, it's just a pretty colour, isn't it? It's it pretty. is, yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Um, which one's second? Phoebe's still second. Oh. There we go. So lovely. It's lovely to say. I'm going to try them all on after the show. <laughs> and then I can choose which one I like. But which colour suits me the best? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'll just do a couple more, because just so I can show you how that builds up. There we go. So you can see oh, nice. you've got your little groups of three there. Okay, and yeah. so you, you go all the way around and you slip stitch it, and then you join another colour. So, I mean, as I said, you could, there's nothing to stop you doing another round in this colour. Right, You okay. could do. Um, but I've done altern alternating colours. So when you come to join your second colour, you can choose whether you join it near the seam. So I tended to put mine somewhere near this seam or whether you put it somewhere completely different. So okay. as I say, if you want it to be um, invisible, if you vary where you put your join, it's not yeah, going to be noticeable. But I kept mine all for sake of neatness on the back near where I'd originally joined it. So when it comes to working the next row of stitches, there's no more working into the stitch. We're going into the gaps between the little groups of three. Right. So you're going to put your hook into that gap. So not through a stitch or anything, just literally into the hole made by the gap between okay. these two groups. Pull the arm back through and join it. And then just make three chain in the air. Again, your first pretend treble and two more trebles in that same space. And then it's going to be three trebles in every gap along. And you'll see how that builds up the pattern. So it's a really straightforward pattern. It's such yeah. a fun thing so to do. So once you get to this stage, yeah, it just grows. No more counting. It's yeah, no more counting. You, it'd be really hard to miss one of these gaps. Yes. <laughs> and you would soon know if you had. You would do, yeah. And you have got a stitch count in there, which tells you how many of these little groups you should have. Okay. So all the way through, I've shown you, um, you know, that just that you can check. So you can see, you'll just literally work into every gap around as you right. go around there. And you just do that for every row or every round. Yeah. And so, then you put a grey one in. Yeah, then I've put a grey one in. And then with my one, I've then put green, then purple, mm. and then another grey one. And it just builds up. And so that builds up. And as you said, you can try it on if it's for you. That builds up until you get to the bit with where you're under your arm. And this is where you need to have measured. Yes, and that's where it's useful to have measured. You've got then you've got your shaping. Oh, I see. So you measure yourself, and then you see if that's yeah, the right. Yeah. So okay. then, I mean, you can even put it on. You just yeah. you know, like a little uh, 
tube. Yes, yeah. Well, the good thing so, about crochet, it's not like with knitting. No. You haven't got any needles. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you just take your hook out. Yeah, and, it's and then you're not going to But you to try trying on knitting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have got a jumper like, like that at the moment. It's on them um, circular mm. needles, and I want to put it on, but obviously I yeah, can't. You can't. <laughs> no, you have to put it on a so. stick, um, like on a spare bit of yarn, which is really annoying. Isn't yeah, it? it's just not worth it. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, so you get keep going until you're you're happy that you like the fit mm. of it under your arms. I have put measurements on there as a suggestion. So you, if you're making it for somebody, you can use those measurements. Okay. And, you know, that will give you a guide as to when to stop. But if you right. want to try it on yourself, you can as well. Okay. So, and then once you've got to that point, there's some shaping. So it's still using the granny stripes, but there's shaping on the back, which okay. makes your round neck, and there's shaping for your V-neck. So when you come okay, to do yeah. that, you work more in rows. So when, you're at, when we've been building up to under the arm, we've been going in rounds, and then... When you get to the point where you want to shape mm. it, I've started yeah. with the back and you rejoin the yarn and you're going to work in rows. So I'll just give you a for example yes. here. Yes, yeah, okay. So, for so you do the back and then you do the front. I started with the back, yeah, because the back is easier basically. Okay. And once you've got the back done, it makes doing the front easier right, because okay, of the count. So there's a bit of counting involved because of the shaping. So you're going to, the back is going to be worked in a row straight upwards and there's a little bit of a gap i'm not going to move my arms but under the arms you can right. see there's a little bit of a gap um there to shape yes, it so yes. it's not just a rectangle it's shaped no, it's under nice the arms there, nice there? shape well it yeah. does sit nicely it does well, it, it just it? makes mm. it a little bit more flattering as well mm. i think yes. and yeah. and a bit more versatile what you wear it with so under the arms there you've got a little bit of shaping. Mm. So in the pattern, it talks you through how to count that, how to make sure oh, okay. that the shaping works out works. right. Yeah, exactly. So obviously it needs to be symmetrical. <laughs> so, Oh, somebody just asked, do you fasten off each colour in each row or do you carry them up the side? I fastened mine off. Mm. Um, you could carry them because, especially if you leave your seam in the same place, yeah. you'd obviously get loops in, inside your jumper, but no one would ever see that. Mm. But I did tend to fasten mine off. And then you get this sort of row of um, ends that you do need to weave in. Yeah. So the, the good thing about carrying it is you don't have to weave the ends in. And um, and obviously it's a bit more time efficient. So it's yeah, completely up true. to you. But what you would get is a little loop coming up from one to the other. Okay. So just bear that in Which mind. Which you could get caught, I suppose. It might get caught. It's got, uh, So if you think if you're... It depends how frequently you're bringing your colour into it. So for the grey, for example, that would only have to go up two rows, but for the others, you're having to pull it up about yeah, four Yeah, so rows. carrying the grey would be okay, but maybe yeah. like the, yeah, the others, yeah. that's so like that gap, isn't it? Exactly. So mm. it's completely up to you, though. There's, I mean, there's so many different ways of doing things in crochet, and it would be how you feel about it. But right. that's, that's, so those are the things to consider. Okay. So also, okay. also, I've put my seam sort of right down the back. Um, rather than, so there's no seam under the arms, which just makes the whole thing look neater, I yeah, think. Yeah, it does, so. yeah, lovely. Right, we've got five minutes left. Okay, so that's fine. So just need to talk for a little bit about the shaping. Mm. So where we've worked in the round, there hasn't been any turning. I just also, before we go any further, want to point out that because the ribbing pulls in where it's a tighter stitch, that's mm. on purpose, The when you start to work your granny stripes, it will come out. Don't worry, it's meant to do that because of the shaping of it. <laughs> right. So I could just imagine that people make it thinking, oh, it's getting really wide here. Have I added stitches? Yeah, that no, is, I, yeah. I think you know, you, you want the bottom of it to pull in and mm. the rest of it to come out. Okay, so, so it's that supposed is, to it's do supposed that. It's supposed to do right. that, and I have put that in the pattern, <laughs> okay. but just in case. Don't panic. Something to bear in mind if you're watching back this YouTube. Right, lovely. Okay, so for the back, for example, it will tell you how many, but you count back a certain number of little clusters. Join your yarn in there. So just like you have been, the main difference is it's in rows rather than um, in going all the way around. And then so you do your chain three and two trebles in there. And then you do three trebles in every gap along for a certain number, which varies according to which size you're making. Okay. So the pattern talks you through all of that. So let's just do, let's do um, eight. So my teddy bear one can have eight. <laughs> so, 
I almost brought it in on a teddy bear. I think you should have I done. thought about going up to my uh, daughter's bedroom and <laughs> grabbing her favourite bear. <laughs> for him to wear. Cause it is, yeah. Well, yes, you, if you've made one of the smaller size or the medium size, you can make one to match for your teddy bear. Yeah, exactly. I do know I'm, I'm definitely finishing this. Yeah, you should do. It's <laughs> so cute. Uh, watch social media. Watch this space for a photo yeah, of it on her teddy. To see it on Sam's teddy. Because <laughs> it would be so cute. It would be, wouldn't it? And then you could sell the pattern to teddy bear places. <laughs> yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let's do one more. Okay, and then you're fastening off and then you will rejoin. Now, because it's all worked on the right side and then no turning, you rejoin if you're right-handed on the far right, if you're oh, left-handed, okay. far left. And so that is going to be in the third of that three chain again. Right. And we're keeping it straight now. There's a little bit of shaping, so it doesn't start off immediately mm. straight. For, you do a little bit of shaping where you just go in the gaps. But again, the pattern talks through all of that. But when it comes to keeping it straight, which is a little bit mm. harder, you're going to rejoin it in the third of that three chain. Might as well use the purple show. It's such a lovely colour. OK, so you just follow the pattern for the shaping. That, exactly. That so you sense. follow the pattern for the yeah. shaping. So there's a bit of shaping where it curves or yeah. comes into a V as for the front and there's a bit of shaping where you want to keep it straight um, and just bear in mind so I suppose the two main points I want to make is always do it from the right side okay you're not turning it over when you come to do that and then when you come to join it you'll join it in the third of this three chain here brilliant when you but it's all I mean you know it's, all, your it's really detailed always, pattern as usual always fab. <laughs> so thank you so yeah. much Sam it's been welcome fab been working, a pleasure working with you yeah. when are you back in three weeks' time, 16th of February. Oh, OK. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Can't wait. Look forward to that yeah. one. Be great. Fab. Got a lovely Thank you so much. <laughs> so you've got to just decide, I think, 34 99 for your own personal that will fit you exactly. I mean, I think that's the joy of it. I've made a few of Sam's items now and they, you know, they fit you. So for 34 99 that's fantastic. So let's start with the one that's in the lead, which is Rachel that I'm wearing. So in the kit, you get full instructions six balls of yarn and in the Rachel it's all pinks and browns and beautiful which is the one I'm wearing so this is number one at the moment gorgeous um the second one well only because it's the second one sitting next to me is Monica which is all these beautiful shades blues and um let me move that over <coughs> gorgeous petrol lovely very very sort of subtle blue really go well with jeans gorgeous I like this one. I'm going to try this one on after the show. I'm still not <laughs> sure. Love that one. Uh, the next one is Janice, which is the lovely monochrome one. Lovely for sort of, um, you know, for work. I think teenagers would love this as well. Yeah, it's re really fashionable black at the moment. Really, really Everything my daughter who's 14 wears is black, black and white. Right, there we really go. Really fashionable. And you get, you know, main, the main colour is the black and you get these shades of grey. You've got the three shades of grey and the white. That's gorgeous. So that's Janice. Or the one that Sam is wearing... Um, Phoebe. <laughs> Phoebe, so grey is lovely. Grey is that really lovely soft grey. And then you've got these beautiful sort of vibrant shades here. So everything you need to make this, um, and it will fit up to like a size 50 inch bust or 60. 62, 62, 34 99 And obviously once you've got the pattern, um, if you're like me, you'll make another one and you'll make another one. Um, and then you can play with it. Yarn Lane is back on Wednesday with the wonderful Wendy Orlando who is um I think she might be doing a giraffe is that a secret hot water bottle or is that for the one after hot water bottle covers so she's on Wednesday join us for that um congratulations to all of you who've managed to get a kit and check out please please do check out if they're in your baskets they will go we often get people who come along later on the day watch and catch up and they've all gone so please, if they're in your baskets, do check out. Um, we will. I will see you back here tomorrow morning and Yarn Lane will be back on Wednesday. So thank you for joining us today. Happy knitting and crochet for all the rest of the day and I'll see you very soon.